Hey guys, um, today I'm just going to go through. Well, I want to go through a couple of recent advancements that we've um, that we've been implementing um, to generate or automate the generation of um, structural analysis loading plans. Um, uh, two ways I'm going to show you today. Um, first one is to uh, extract loading that's already been defined in an existing structural analysis model, um, and then automatically generate uh, a, a Revit a Revit model and, and a whole series of, of, of floor loading plans. Um, and then secondly, uh, how can we start to generate loading to be applied in a structural analysis model and also link that with, um, with Revit floor loading plans. So I've got a GSA model here. I think this is just one of the, um, the sample models that, that comes with GSA. Um, and I can look under the loading uh, and load case specification. I've got a couple of wind loads. I've got a couple of floor loading um, load cases as well. Um, so I've got one for SDL and one for live load. Um, and what we're going to look at here is the grid loading which has been applied. Um, and in GSA, they typically, um, for a, say, a grid structure, a grid steel frame structure, you, you apply a grid area load. Um, and that, that has a, an input polyline as well as a, um, an, ax, an axis um, and uh, uh, as well as a grid surface. So, um, and then your grid surfaces will have, basically will be associated with a grid plane um, and that grid plane will uh, typically have an elevation or whatever for the different heights of the, of the building or whatever. So just looking at the grid area loads, we've got a whole bunch and we've got a whole bunch of loads um, with different values for different regions, um, which are specified for that low case. Okay, so um, I'm now in Grasshopper and what I'm gonna do is, is use the, um, use the GG, um, GSA import data component to uh, import the, that structural analysis model that I was just looking at in GSA. So if you haven't used, um, if you haven't used this before, um, you can go to the Geometry Gym um, Structural Analysis tab, um, and under the, the, I guess, the base panel, um, there's, a, there's a GSA import data. Um, and what this does is, is we'll basically load the file in, um, into the Grasshopper environment. So I've just got a file path here, which um, points to that model, uh, and I'll just uh, that can be a, a, a .gwb file or a, or a GWA um, text file format. Um, and what that what that's done is started to load in, uh, I guess the our low cases um, and a whole bunch of other things in term, you know um, curve elements, uh, materials, um, structural analysis nodes, and, and stuff like that. Uh, now, some recent advancements um, of what we've been doing is is the ability to start to decompose um, load cases. So, you'll notice a couple of um, new components in the GSA uh, loads. Um, instead of just a, a GSA load case, we've now got a decompose um, load case. And what that will do is, is basically um, pull out all the loads associated with a given load case, um, as well as give you um, a load case keyword. So um, I can see here that I've got a, a grid area load um, associated with with um, with the load case, and and also um, it tells me what type of load that is. If I want to start dispatching, if I've got multiple um, types of loads within a within a load case. Uh, so I'll just mention that um, I'm only interested in uh, the floor loading low cases in this instance. So I have just, um, I guess, selected those items from from the from the larger load cases uh, list. Uh, so now that I've I've got my loadings associated with um, with that, I, I I basically I need to know. Um, I need to now decompose that grid area load so I can I can understand what the load pressure is um, and also which polyline is associated with the with that um, with that area load because what I want to do is start to generate um, a loading plan uh, in Revit downstream f from this information. So under the GSA loads as well, um, 
we've got a decomposed grid area load. Now this is one we've we've generated for this um, uh, for this purpose. Um, you, we could also start to generate decompose node loads, um, curve loads as well, if if we wanted to, to I guess to start to to pull out those, those types of information. Um, so I can I can uh, wire my loads output um, into my uh, the grid area decompose load, um, and then I can start to I guess get the information that's associated with this. So. Um, I get a polyline uh, associated with it, with each load. I'll just zoom to that. So you can start to see that the polylines, which have been um, defined in GSA here, um, I can also start to look at my the the the, the pressures which are associated with that load, um, with those different loads, and we can start to use this information. Um, to generate our uh, to generate our our, our Revit um, loading plans, the other thing that you also get with this is your um, is the grid plane which with which the loads associated to, and you can also start to visualize these in Rhino as well. Um, so this allows us to uh, check to see which load is associated with each level in the GSA model. So in this particular instance, I don't have an existing Revit model for this building, uh, and maybe I've I've just generated a GSA model, um, which I actually want to use uh, to generate the Revit uh, a quick Revit model as well, so that I can start to I guess um, de demonstrate to a client the the loading types and the building geometry and form. So what I've done here is I've literally quickly generated. Um, a quick Revit model using our our uh, our Revit um, our Revit plugin for for Grasshopper, um, and I've been able to do that by simply um, decomposing the be the beam elements um, and getting getting the properties for those, getting the axes, uh, and simply generating a whole bunch of Revit framing um, using this. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is generating a whole bunch of Revit levels and these are associated off the grid planes that have been specified from GSA. So I'm simply getting the planes at, for, for each of these um, grid area loads, getting the, the Z axis from those, creating a, creating a set so I've got all my level values and then generating those, um, generating those Revit levels. Now we're going to use these levels um, to uh, generate our Revit floor plans uh, as well. Okay, so the last part of this um, process is to generate, um, I guess, the, lo the, the loading plans themselves um, using Grasshopper. Um, most of the components used in this section are under the, the Geometry Gym Revit tab. Um, under the Geometry Room Revit View panel, and this gives us the ability to start to generate plan views, um, also sheets, um, and viewports on those sheets, as well as um, filled regions, which we're going to use to to nominate the um, the different loading um, values. So. Uh, Reasonably straightforward on, on, on how we're um, generating these loading plans. Although the tree structures can start to get a little bit um, uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, so if I just go back to uh, the polylines that we, which we generated before, um, what what I know is that I've got um, two load cases. So um, the first number in the um, in the tree path relates to the load case. The second number in the tree path relates to the level, and the number of items relates to the number of uh, relates to those polylines, um, those two polylines, um, which define the loading at at each level. Um, so, what I can do from there is. Um, 
generate uh, a plan view and in this instance I'm going to generate a view for each uh, different load case. So I can I can pull in my my levels which I've my Revit levels which I uh, generated um, and then all I'm doing here is generating a whole bunch of names. So I've just concatenated the text string here. I've got um, what that I want that plan view to um, the designation for that load plan. I can bring in my level names and then I'm also going to bring in my uh, load cases to concat for that name. And if I just show you the output of that. Basically, I've got a load plan, level zero floor loading live, load plan level zero floor loading SDL. And I've got one of these for, um, for, for, for each. Uh, so uh, I've generated my plan view. Then I can simply generate um, a Revit sheet um, and then I can assign that plan view to the Revit sheet by creating, um, by creating a viewport. And I've done a similar thing by um, generating the titles and, and the names of those, uh, the names and numbers of the sheets and, and viewports as well. And the last thing is to generate the field regions um, which are associated with those plan views. Um, so you can sort of get an understanding or a, a visualization of those as well just by clicking on that field region. Uh, and they basically take that polyline boundary, uh, uh, the view in which it's associated with, um, and then also the type of field region. So um, all I've done here is uh, nominated a field region type and this is just done by the family name. Um, you've got to m just make sure that these are available uh, in your Revit project before you go to import those um, into LiveC. The last thing I've done here is um, I've added a text parameter to that to each field region which basically specifies what the load value is um, coming from that GSA. So I can click on that uh, field region and, and it'll tell me in Revit what that, what that value is. So once I've set that up, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of um, baking, that to, baking that to file. Uh, if you're using Rhino inside, you can do um, the direct bake. Uh, and So I can now go to Revit and just import that uh, IFC file. Okay, so that so the building's now imported into Revit. You can see the the members and and, and elements there, um, and then we also now have a whole bunch of of floor plans that have been that have been generated uh, in Revit for the different um, loads, and then with that um, we also get get our hatching, which is associated with the different load areas. Um, if I go and click on that hatching now, I can see that there's a load value parameter that's been added as well, which is minus um, minus five for that area, uh, minus seven point five for that for that um, little bit higher loading zone, um, and then also it's generated a whole bunch of sheets with those associated floor plan levels um, as well. So, I mean, you can start to add multiple load plans to sheets um, as well or, or whatever and start to add your keys and, and, and stuff like that as well. So I might leave that video there but stay tuned for some more videos on this type, these types of workflows. Um, but I definitely uh, encourage you to give this script uh, a run and test it on your own uh, on your own buildings. You can find a link to the script uh, in the description below. Um, yeah, and let us know if there's any improvements or suggestions you have around this um, to, to, improve, to improve your workflows. And uh, thanks for listening. And make sure you subscribe uh, to stay up to date with, um, with the latest videos.